uh, maybe it's some a natural thing. Uh, the the best songs have been written in their twenties and thirties, when they were twenty uh, or thirty years old. You know, um, because and I experienced that myself. <clears throat> I I have written worse songs before my twenties. Okay. And I fear a time uh, when I turn forty that it gets uninspired or I don't know. Hannes, thank you so much for your time today. You're back with a bang, and here I was thinking that you've never been away. How many people have made that joke already? Well, not so many actually, but uh, you know, since we are not a band that bring out uh, a new album or new music in general every year, there are loads of bands that do that, and there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, we're just not one of these uh, bands, so... Yeah. Um, and the time, uh, you know, in COVID and everything was was kind of a big, big break. Uh, at least it felt uh, like that to us. So uh, it makes total sense to to uh, title our new record "Back with a Bang," you know, because it feels like some. I, mean, I know it sounds a little bit stupid to some people, but it feels like a comeback after this uh, COVID time. Yeah. And uh, seriously, we had um, we had our anxiety about uh, how the time's gonna be uh, after the pandemic. We didn't know how long this shit will gonna uh, be there, and um, and most importantly, if our fans will still be there. Because we we uh, right when the pandemic started, it hit us that hard because we had like a super nice hype going on, you know right. and. I mean, you know exactly how hard it is for a band uh, to to punch through the big mass and uh, to have like the attention that every band wants. And yeah. we have this attention and finally after uh, I don't know like 13 years of hard work, and then this motherfucker of COVID uh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. punched us right in the gut. So um, that felt unfair, you know. And um, uh, so we had this serious anxiety of how it's going to be uh, after that. And so talking about uh, a back with a bang, it literally feels like that because we uh, felt this power again. We uh, uh, not at all had the case that uh, the halls were empty or almost empty. Uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, people were coming more and more to our shows after, after we were allowed to play again. And um, this energy we soaked up so so much that uh, we just had to write a, a new album that is filled with this you know life energy to to burst yeah, yeah, yeah. people that follow you your career a little closer know that the inner workings of the industry is not something that you are you know a stranger to uh people that you yes. know what you work on is you're not just quote unquote just uh, a front man of a band you work a lot behind the scenes you've worked on a yeah. lot of exciting albums as producer as well exit eden was you were you're very involved with as well and some other bands that have received awards and stuff like that so for you i know that you 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 are a front man you need to be on that stage but can you like are these two very different worlds or like is there one that you like to do more of like would you like to spend more time with other That's bands in studios that's an interesting question um i experienced it this way i love the change you know um mm -hmm. even uh in in one part of of my musical uh being i know it sounds a little um weird but for example in the songwriting uh i enjoy um to to write for different genres not mm -hmm. just uh, rock music or metal music, which I, of course, love the most because I grew up with that. But I also work for uh, artists who are not rock at all. Like, mm -hmm. I don't do hip hop, but um, for, I don't know if you know this genre, but German Schlager, it's German speaking yeah, yeah. Uh, artists. And uh, sometimes even for pop artists and uh, I enjoy that because uh, jumping from uh, this to that um, m m makes me feel refreshed at some mm -hmm. point because 
I would get tired if I did the same all the time. And talking about uh, the comparison of uh, playing live and uh, writing songs, it's uh, actually the same thing. Probably if I only sit in my studio and writing songs 365 days a year, I would turn nuts. Right. Uh, I need that moment and not just being on vacation, but also like yeah, yeah, job wise. Yeah. I need to to have this moment where when I do something else and see something else and the 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 sounds weird but it is best if it's the complete opposite you know okay like uh, and for example playing live is the complete opposite of studio work because studio work is perfection you have days weeks sometimes months to um, to to work on the record, to work on songs, uh, to put the absolute maximum out of something. And to play live is a one-shot thing. You stand there, you perform, and it sounds different the day before and the day after. So uh, it's it's some, some sort of, um, how do you say? Um, like like just this this you get punched in the in the water and uh, you you have to swim and yeah. this i i can enjoy also uh, yeah, 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 because yeah, of yeah. the the big uh, opposites here so to make it as short as possible i need to have both and uh, yeah. i couldn't even say and now i need one year of songwriting or a half a year so it depends You know, you guys are not afraid to use a ton of humor and not to take yourself too serious at times. I have to keep your feet on the ground. At the same time as well, um, you guys use, the, especially like when you write lyrics, some songs are heavily tongue in cheek and, and all about having a good time. But there's a lot of songs and a lot of lyrics that you guys use on this album, on the previous album, where mm -hmm. you can dig deeper if you want to. And there are lyrics that can make you think a little bit more, which is not always, you know, to use the term expected. A lot of people yeah. discover you on big festivals and what have you. It's like, oh yeah, three o'clock afternoon, beer in my hand, party rock band, let's have a good time. Um, but not, every, not everybody digs that level deeper, if you will. Um, knowing how important your music is, not just, the, not just Kissing Dynamite, but everything that you work on. How do you look at that? You know, like, is it okay that there's a lot of people out there that will just enjoy Kissing Dynamite, the party band? Um, 100% or... yes. 100% yeah. yes, because, uh, you know, we are not missionaries. We don't preach uh, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. a religion here. We, we do music, and uh, even though music is super important to us, it's everybody's decision if he wants to listen to it or not. We mm -hmm. don't um, force anybody to, to do so. And um, also, the way how look people on us is perfectly their choice. I mean, we don't, uh, we never started this band because of, um, you know, uh, uh, a deeper, super big message about something uh, in, 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 the, in the subcontext or something. We started this band because we feel to play this kind of music that we love the most because mm -hmm. this is the music what we've uh, listened to when we were kids, basically. Like mm -hmm. I'm talking about, you know, this uh, 80s inspired hard rock or melodic rock music. That's just what we love the most. And also, uh, if you go, I mean, you can name uh, different favorite bands. For In my uh, personal taste, there are definitely bands like Bon Jovi, Guns N' Roses, uh, Def Leppard, uh, but also Winger. And right. uh, I mean, compare those four. One, the one has more uh, uh, um, like a prog vibe in inside of this subgenre, right, right. Uh, and deeper lyrics. The other band has like more the party songs, and I don't fucking care about anything. And you know what? I like both worlds, and there are mm -hmm. even more worlds to explore. So why why should you? Let's put this the other way around. We don't force people uh, to listen or to uh, to our music or to make uh, a specific picture out of us mm -hmm. so why should people force us to to be a band with just one message with just yeah. one uh a way to create songs that's perfectly our choice right so 
uh, whenever I feel uh, I want to say something deeper within a song, I do. Whenever I feel uh, like we do uh, a song that is written for a live uh, concert where we just want to see the people jump, then we don't need those um, like super deep lyrics. Right. Then it's about something uh, different. And that is why our uh, range, so to speak, is quite wide. And mm -hmm. you can even also musically, we have, for example, on the new record, we have a song called Not A Wise Man that is not even played with big drums and e-guitars, but like a campfire setting with acoustic guitars, cajon, and like a super tiny uh, instrumentation. Um, on the same record where the devil is a woman is like, which is right. super fucking massive. And uh, we enjoy that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So talking about a band that can do all these different kinds of elements, you named four bands earlier, and I was just surprised that you did not include Scorpions there, because I thought I was talking to the biggest Scorpion fans of all time. They are. <laughs> they are definitely in my favorite list. You know, th this is a, a list that is that long, and I, I, uh, know, yeah. I never can decide. For example, Rock You Like a Hurricane is one of the best uh, rock songs of all time, in my opinion, when it comes to the catchy catchy uh, easy ones you know right 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 yeah yeah which uh, not comparable at all to bohemian rhapsody for example no no of course of course but even with scorpions you know you know sales of Caron or is there as well like is it possible for you because like in the metal and the rock world there are a few debates that will never be solved it's like you know is it ozzy or dio maiden or priest but then scorpions there's like so many different eras and you have such big fans of each era can you say like, yeah, no, I'm I'm a late 80s Scorpions guy, not a 70s Scorpions guy, or is it too hard for you as well? It's always hard to, to give a general uh, answer to such a question, but I mean, I, I would say um, no matter what band you're listening to, uh, maybe it's some, a natural thing. Uh, the, the best songs have been written in their... 20s and 30s when they were 20 uh, or 30 years old you know um because and i experienced that myself <clears throat> i i have written worse songs before my 20s okay and i fear a time uh when i turn 40 that it gets uninspired or i don't know uh so basically uh, <clears throat> it's always um the moment uh, a band really uh flashes me when they have this this big inspiration uh, yeah. behind their songs. And, um, well, as I said, a natural thing that uh, Scorpions or Bon Jovi nowadays, in my opinion, sound less inspired than they did 20 years ago, but mm -hmm. I don't judge that. Many people judge that and say, this band was once uh, a good one and now they suck. I wouldn't uh, I would never go that far because I pay my biggest respect to all of them that mm -hmm. they're still there that they still uh, write songs and still play them live um, and more than that for those who don't want to listen to their music their newer music they can easily choose to listen to the old music so where's yeah, the yeah. problem yeah 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 so Time doesn't stop and we're all getting older. You celebrate your birthday recently as well. So are you getting to that point that you are getting just a little anxious of age? Not really. I mean, um, how I don't have a, a real relation to to my own age. It's uh, I never did something else in my life and uh, mm -hmm. At some point, I started uh, to put everything on this one cart, which is called music. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it luckily turned out to be a success for myself. And uh, ever since, I never stopped. And that's why I don't feel uh, a difference in age, basically. Yeah, I know yeah. it sounds stupid, but... Uh, I mean, I can see it in my face. I don't look that young anymore than the, uh, wh how I did uh, 10 years ago. But I mean, uh, we're, none of us we're, we're, none of us we're, we can't avoid that, right? Exactly. Well, I'm turning 40 in just a You don't like look like him. I'll turn 40 in a month. So uh, okay. I'll, let you, well, I'll let you know if my life starts falling apart <laughs> after that. <laughs> You 
you are going to be playing, um, you know, big shows again with this album. I think in the, on the 20th of June, I think you guys start uh, your tour. I saw you last at Grass Pop 2023. I saw you at Alcatraz nice. 2021 as well, the, the weird nice. COVID edition. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, you guys, you're getting to this point. You said yourself, like, you've been doing this for quite some time now. And you've got, you know, you got that momentum. That means you have hits, which not every rock band has these days. So how hard with a new knowing that you're going to play a bunch of festivals and what have you, you always have limited time. So how hard is it to put that set list together now? Because you've got oh, man, you at talk least about something. five, six this new is... songs. I'm sure you want to play of the new record and that might not be possible. Yes, you, you talk about something here. I mean, um, it's always like always the question, not even for festival uh, appearances, which are even shorter, um, yeah. even for uh, like our headline shows, which are 90 minutes or even longer at some point. Um, it's super hard to choose the set lists with every album that we bring out. Um, people definitely can expect our biggest hits for sure. I mean, uh, a lot of the uh, top 10 in Spotify will uh, will make their way into our set list. Not all of them. Sometimes we, we want to surprise people also by putting something um to the set list which has never been there before or which okay. i just didn't expect but of course uh we also want to showcase the new record we're not we're not a band neither a band like acdc uh, that plays one new song or right. even no new song there has been a debate about that yeah and i mean if you're fucking acdc you can't do that because you have uh, like 50 world hits or something like right. that. You can even yeah. choose out of the world hits, you know, yeah. uh, which is a super nice situation in the end. Um, I, so I don't know if I would, uh, wouldn't do exactly the same. Um, and, uh, but we're neither a band that plays the whole album. Some of bands do that. Mm -hmm. Um, we sort of want to have a nice mixture. Uh, like, uh, we play uh, a few songs of the new record but of course uh, people also want to hear the stuff uh, that has been successful for a reason and um, so yeah but you know it's the hardest thing to to throw out a song that has been in a set list for 10 years because yeah. you get so used to it you know um, it feels kind of wrong to, to put yeah. out such a song and uh, you need a few shows uh, to finally realize, okay, the show works also without that song in the set list, so everything's perfectly fine, but it's always a fight. Hannes, I hope that in between those massive festival days, if they give you stress about the new set list that you find some days in between that you can go to Luna and relax on a lake uh, and just have some fun. Um, Thanks, man. Hannes, thank you so much for your time today. I really do appreciate it. It's always fun uh, when you guys put out new material. And um, it is going to be a bang indeed with, with this new album. And I'm sure that all the fans will enjoy the new songs uh, when they see you at a festival or at a headline show, um, even this year in Japan, which is also really cool. So uh, good stuff coming. Thanos, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, it. Jesper. All Likewise. Best, thank you. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.